Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Hello. You have reached Late Night Large. I am your master of ceremonies, and please welcome your master beta, Michael Lark. <laughs> Every week. Howdy, people. How's it going? Interesting topic for this week's show. Tell yeah. the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the theme for this week will be the senses. The six senses, of course, I speak of. <laughs> and where better to start than uh, the sense that you're probably utilising right now most? Pardon? Hearing, you hear me, Turkey. So, Mike, how would you would you say you value your hearing? What no. I do, you douchebag. Well, not really. Let, let me give you an example. When you go to a nightclub, do you wear ear protection? No. Then you don't really give a damn, then, do you? Because you're going to have tinnitus by the time you're thirty-five. I would give a damn if I lost it. <laughs> well, obviously, then it's too late, isn't it? Y- yes, I value my hearing. I, mean, I, I, I don't know how you can argue otherwise. To be honest, perhaps I don't. Do you think it's the most abused sense, though? <laughs> Depends who you are, really, doesn't it? Depends being... on what you put yourself through, doesn't it? Yeah, but I mean, being a young person, an average young person, surely the hearing is the most abused sense. The mm. amount of nightclubs, Taste festivals, sometimes. raves. Huh? Taste. I abuse that quite a lot. True. Okay, touche. Sight. I've seen some pretty horrible oh. things <laughs> in my time. <laughs> Let's stick to the subject. Okay, hearing. So... Uh, you, you're never concerned at all. I guess you're mostly intoxicated when you've been to very loud venues. I mean, do you ever get home and you know ring it in your ears, think, oh god, I, I really should, uh, I really should protect myself a little bit. I don't, I don't really want to be struggling to pick out conversations when I'm 35. When I get home, uh, <laughs> if right, I if right. I ever think, it, shit, I should have protected myself a little bit. <laughs> it's not my ears. <laughs> <laughs> you walked into that one with open arms. Do you take pleasure from your hearing? It occurred to me that hearing, more than most other senses, there doesn't seem to be any direct pleasure associated with it. Or is there? Music to my ears. Yes, music. Some people would say that music is the sweetest thing on earth, the only thing that makes you feel as if there's more to life than what we immediately see and come into contact with. So what I mean is... Surely hearing is very important to you because, you know, without music, it'd be a pretty dull life, wouldn't it? I mean, if someone threatened to blow your eardrums out... I'd say no, thank you. <laughs> I'd get up in their grill, I'd bust out Des and Troy, and uh, <laughs> I'd kick some ass. How do we rate? How do we rate hearing on the on the uh, the, the famous five? What? Uh, where where would you rank it? Where where do I think it ranks? Yeah. I mean, let's 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 just quickly uh, remind ourselves of hearing, smell, taste, touch, and sight. I mean, um, I I think there's more to them than meets the eye, if you forgive the pun, because uh, you can hearing immediately hearing affects you in different ways as yeah, well. Yeah, and you it can Im- your balance all sorts. Exactly. Well, this is what I mean. Yeah, it it's under the surface. Some of these, some of these come across as very superficial. I would argue that people would immediately jump to to sight as the most important, forgetting that there are many things, many, many things that the other senses also affect. And you just correctly stated that, obviously, if you, uh, if you lose your hearing, either temporarily or permanent, your, uh, your balance can be affected. Without even realising, you subconsciously use hearing to judge the, the space you're in. Use it to judge how close the walls are, the acoustics of the room, you know, if if someone's approaching. I'd put hearing, then, if we're ranking it. <laughs> I'd stick it at one being most important, five yeah. being least. Two, two. No, 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 not, not important. Because oh, okay. import, importance, importance, I think, is the wrong word. Okay, uh, most valued. Most valued. Two? Three? Two or three? Two. Two or three? Uh, okay, we're going to say three. We'll put we'll put it at three. Temporarily, I may move that. Okay, so 
OK, we've ascertained that the hearing is more important than it initially seems. And we're going to put that at number three, then. Uh, the next sense we're going to discuss, another slightly derided, possibly, smell. <laughs> yeah. you. It's one of those senses that you moan like hell when you're deprived of it. And <laughs> sometimes you don't appreciate it when you... Uh... No, you don't at all. <laughs> you beca- <laughs> because, yeah, because... Y- do you know? Do you know what I thought the other day? Well, I mean, I thought just now, but it occurred to me the other day that, that it does seem like there, there are a lot more unpleasant smells than there are pleasant smells in the world. True. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Think think of the smells that is actually a great pleasure and actually lifts your spirit to uh, to inhale. You know, I don't know, petrol, smell of freshly cut grass, something we won't go into, Aww. strawberry vanilla incense. Paint thinner, chloroform, napalm in the morning. Whereas there's a list as long as your arms, unpleasant smells. Probably more natural, should we say, than unpleasant. Yes, than odors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd agree with that. Would you then, S- so would you then argue that smell is one of the least valued? S- no. Uh, you, what, you Superficially, it would seem like yeah. that, wouldn't it? Because there's more cons than pros, apparently. Smell will also affect, as do other senses. Uh, no, 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 wait, hold on, senses. Bef- yeah, before, yeah, before it, you go into it, that, but superficially... On. Superficially, yes, I'd say it's one of the least valued. Yeah, because, I mean, when you have a cold, I mean, it's not the end of the world, is it? But then no. if you temporarily lost your vision, that probably would scare the hell out of you. Yes. So True. there we go. Okay, so we're saying superficially, it's, it's probably it. right at the bottom. I'd say probably right at the bottom, yeah. Let's, okay, so that's superficially. Now let's dig under the surface a little bit, because of course smell also affects the most obvious other sense that it directly affects. Taste. Is taste. We know this most uh, obviously, I mean, sorry, this is manifested most obviously in smokers and people with heavy colds, obviously. Yep. Did you know if you uh, were to blindfold yourself and you were deprived, deprived of, of smell... Uh, deprived of smell, right. Yeah, okay. uh, and you were to be fed apple and onion, they would taste exactly the same. That's that's <laughs> a little... <laughs> I'm really tempted to try that. That's a fun fact for you. Seriously? Yes, they would taste exactly the same. If you couldn't smell or see them... Okay, so Obviously is, it, or is that because them. so that's because they if you were completely unaware of what yeah, they were but 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 that's because they they would be tasted by the same area of the tongue yes so they would seem like the same thing wow that's, there you go that's, that's how, how much, important it can be that's how much smell can affect taste. and can I just throw another pro that possibly again isn't thought of superficially with smell did you realise that smell is the sense that most keenly uh, reinvigorates memory. Nothing stokes a memory so instantly as catching a whiff of something you, you've forgotten since you were a kid. I mean, you remember people's smell as well, don't you? Oh, well, do you? pheromones. Fe- yeah. Pheromones apparently are one of the bases of uh, of mutual attraction. Yeah. You know, without realising, obviously, you don't go for someone and think, "Oh, well, okay, men maybe do, because <laughs> women do nice. smell pretty good." Most women. But I, you know, I don't think people specifically think oh, I'm going after that person because they smell the best. But it, it comes into it. There's a, it's a big connection, the pheromone thing. So obviously, it plays a massive part in attraction. And yeah, the memory thing. You know, you only have to catch a whiff of I don't yeah. know. You only have to open I've, the tub of Play-Doh and have a whiff of that. I've straight I, back to being six years old. I've identified uh, people's items of people's clothing before. <laughs> oh God! By the smell. Honestly, I've, I've done it. Like someone's left uh, a jacket, a jumper, or yeah. something around around my house uh, when there's been uh, a few people around, say. Yeah, I, just I, one big whiff, yeah, and I can, I, can, I can tell you who it is. It's it's almost exclusively men, but no, that, I mean that's really interesting because you know superficially smell seems to be at the bottom of the list, and yet now where are we, are we ranking it after realizing its full potential? Where is it now? <sighs> I'm, set, I'm gonna have to s- I'm gonna I'm gonna just write the numbers here to remind us. So, Mike, you put you put S- hearing at number three. Sm- smell. May I just add, briefly. Yeah. I don't know. Would would that have some of a, b- a bigger effect on your maybe some more primal 
instincts uh, would it have an effect on your say your fight or flight it is lust driven by lust driven by smell and, and blood blood lust maybe you know if you if you scent blood does that does that trigger something in your mind would would, would you react to a situation differently Perhaps, I think smell may have had a, a a different effect for us or may have been important in different ways perhaps yeah. many thousands of years ago when we were evolving true smell it's you know o- probably only second to sight I would argue in marketing sales and marketing of businesses you know if you if you want someone to come into your shop or whatever freshly baked cookies or works every time well yeah fast food restaurants KFC you know deliberately channel their the Maybe smell of their hearing food. though would be in marketing radio adverts things like that people things that they say to entice you I guess as well would be more yeah but that's more yeah I think that's that, I think that's sense, that's more in terms of uh, rhymes song that kind of thing but yeah I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go with that see to that one yeah anyway quick where, where would you rank it because we're, we're gathering on a bit I'm going to have to say that come on smell it's I'm sorry but is it above hearing I don't think it is you don't think it's above hearing wow okay I, I don't think it is I think that it even though it does in heart, technically enhance another sense yeah so they're codependent you know taste and smell are codependent yeah I th- I think it. I'm not sure. I th- so you're going to put number what number four or or bottom again? It's difficult. It's difficult. I'll tell you. Play a song. I'll t- I'll tell you afterwards. Oh, for goodness sake! I'll, I'll open quickly by telling you. And oh, you. Any time to contemplate. Okay. Get your stinking rat out! It's late night, large. Ah, uh, I don't. I guess I'll put. Smell at number four. So, despite the fact that you had it at the bottom at the start, all that uh, that deliberating did eventually sway you a little bit, and you moved it up to number four. I want to put it higher, but for now, it's number four. It's number four. It's okay. We'll leave it at number four because it's time to discuss touch. It's just touch is is the essence of what you actually are. I mean, if you if you the fall ability over to feel. If you fall over, you come into contact with the ground. It's the, Everything it's you do, the ability all to times feel in a physical sense. Yeah, I mean, it's not just coming it, into contact. To with feel your newborn touch. child in your arms. <laughs> Don't say that. To you feel know, when steer so, away from cliche. To feel when something is hot, so that you know you're not scolding yourself. That's a good point. Until you smell burning flesh. So okay, we're gonna we're going to it's, we're going to describe. Hold on. All right. Okay. So if we if we go back to hearing, okay, <sighs> it's getting really old now. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go to hearing, hearing can be described as would, would you say de- a defensive <laughs> sense? I, I'd say so. Defensive. You you hear something approaching. So so yeah, it's well, used to guide you away from danger. Kind of primal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but obviously we're talking primal because all of this around us is practically man-made. We're talking about our basic okay, right, yes, evolution. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so hearing can be defensive, but it can also provoke pleasure, like we said with music. Yeah, buddy. So, it, is it... So, other than those two, is there any other th- factor we need to consider? A defensive adaptation, uh, as in it... A defensive essential and or a pleasure organ. Personal preference. What, sorry? What, when putting these, it, you're saying when judging these, so when when we're judging them... Yeah, when we're when evaluating we're, them, yeah. And when we're putting them, yeah, eventually ranking then order. ranking them yes. personal preference. Is is that, yeah, but is the, are those the only two factors we need to consider? Whether they're, you know, whether they're there for defensive reasons or, or how how practical they are defensively and how much they offer as a pleasure organ yeah okay Okay. yeah yeah those are the two things okay we need to tell if something's too hot we need to tell if something's too cold we need to tell if something's sharp yeah if you if you're 
if you grow up without knowing these things, it's extremely dangerous. How do you know not to stand on broken glass or true? Well, yeah, especially in like we were saying more primal times. How yeah. do you know if a tooth of a saber tooth tiger <laughs> is sharp? Although I'm not, I, I'm not sure if broken glass is a good example because if, yeah, okay. if you still had the other senses, you could understand that something of that kind of but if you've never texture felt would it. puncture skin. But if you've never felt it, what you think? That and no one told the, you. So, well, so you'd think that having your skin punctured was a good, pleasurable thing. <laughs> no, but you can't feel it if you are devoid of touch. But people would argue that might be a good thing. No pain. Is it a good thing to be without the sense of touch sometimes? Okay, let's sometimes. Yeah, let, let's say it's, it's, unpra- it's impractical not to have the ability to feel. That's basically what it is. That feeling it's in a, a defensive physical sense. Thing. You, so it is a defensive thing because you're saying, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Say the soles of your feet. Say they were yeah. devoid of of touch, so you didn't know what you were walking on. So you walk on broken glass, syringe needles, snakes, poison snakes, all kinds of things. Well, you'd be able to see poison snakes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Touche. Volcanic rock. Is that not a defensive advantage that you, you don't feel the pain? But you're saying, well, no, being in the pain is inessential because you'd end up killing yourself. You have to be able to feel physical pain. You do realise that's To, rea- know, you do to that's understand actually... the boundaries of what you can and cannot do. True, but you realise that's actually a real condition. Very rare, but, but yes. people do have real condition where they can't feel any pain. Yeah, I've got it. No, no, Mike. I don't feel pain. <laughs> don't feel fear. I thought that was. I don't feel fear, pain. Anyway, let's let's try not to labour this point too much. Pleasure. I yeah, mean, buddy. It goes without saying, doesn't it? Touch, touch, pleasure. I mean, if we let's try not to just go down the lurid sexual because you know there are certain parts of the human anatomy that are quite pleasurable to touch when the person that you're with you quite attracted to. You might also want to taste and do other <laughs> things. But <laughs> If we steer away from them, there are other more, you know, more childish pursuits. You know, the feel of fabric on your skin, fresh fabric, the feel freshly of your washed. newborn child in your the arms. feeling of rolling naked in in the grass, things like this. Or the feeling of swimming in a cool stream. These are the you know great pleasures derived from these things, aren't they? They are. Is there any other avenue we need to go with the touch? No. How about how about phys- how about violence? How important is is it to violence? being able to withstand violence or dish out violence well being devoid yourself of touch yeah. wouldn't necessarily limit your ability to to dish out punishment in a violent way yeah so what we're saying is being it would being devoid it. of being devoid of touch would enhance negative traits as in it, it would it would limit it the would, amount of negative it energy would you could pro- feel most probably in in yeah. So, in a negative sense, it's only in a negative sense, though, because in a positive sense, you wouldn't be able to you touch anything. You pleasurable. wouldn't roll around naked in the grass <laughs> and things like that if you couldn't feel it, and you were unable to experience the pleasurable side of touch. Yeah. Then you a lot, you wouldn't do a lot of those things. What I'm trying to say, though, and you would do more of the negative. Yeah. The things. point I'm trying to hammer home, right, is being without hearing. There's no real positives. At all, I mean, you, you couldn't make a case for saying, "Oh, I'd love to be without hearing because of this smell." Okay, you might not consider it an important sense. If you're without it, it's not particularly pleasant, is it? I mean, you don't gain anything from it. Touch is possibly—is that the only sense where, if you were deprived of it, you there would actually be a positive side, but only in a negative in a negative aspect. Sometimes I've wished I was deprived of sight. <laughs> we'll discuss that more later anyway ranking quick where are we going to put touch we've got hearing at number three and smell at number four I think you know what that leaves two you're going to put in number two yeah yeah we agreed on that okay touch is the second most valued sense for Mike Large okay we've ranked three out of the five senses taste let's first of all go through the defensive the defensive necessity of taste something tastes off you can smell it spit it out it's a defense mechanism in that against being against poisoned, being poisoned by food, yeah or 
poison. If it tastes, <laughs> yeah, if it tastes off, then you know that's yeah. a sure way of telling, rather than waiting for it to go into your body and then get rejected that way. True, you may have already done the damage. And let's not forget that we're talking about things that have come, you know, have been given to us, our ancestors from centuries and centuries ago we're imagining you know obviously we don't live in a world where we have a minefield of information and obviously packaging and what have you to tell us all the properties and nutrients of food if we were just relying on our senses like you say you know if if something tastes like it's rotting then we know not to let it go past our lips and spit it back out before we uh we get too much uh, bad reaction from it. So that's a good point. I mean, taste is a multifaceted sense as well, because, what is it, is it four areas? Four areas of the tongue that deal that's with taste? What is it, salt, four. sweet, salty, sweet, sour, bitter, yeah, so... Yeah, it is... Uh, so, salty, yeah, sweet. No, bitter is at the, I believe, at the back of your tongue. Yeah, okay. Um, moving forward, so at the back but at the sides, is sour. I th- believe it goes. Y- yeah. Then salty at the front on the sides, and then sweet at the tip. Right at the tip? Well, not right at the tip, but the front portion. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So I, I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's how it goes. Okay, so that's how the, the tongue's divided then. Yes, so um, there, yeah, there are four. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, d- defensively we've discussed, yeah, to t- taste if something's decaying or poisoned or what have you. Let's talk about pleasure. Mm-hmm. The use of it for pleasure. The most obvious, obviously, is the delectation of food. The taste buds. Yeah, buddy. Now, some might argue that the... Uh, the indulgence of this particular area of the body is one of the reasons for the obesity epidemic. Perhaps. And, you know, we're not talking... Lack of self-restraint would be another one. Yes, but it's also, it's the addictive nature of these foods rather than that they taste absolutely unbelievably out of this world. I think a lot of them actually don't taste too good at all. It's it's definitely the addictiveness of the taste rather than the... A great Quality. example I'll give of this, without being slanderous, dairy milk. Slander. Uh, in my opinion, not even real chocolate. And a horrible aftertaste, and yet you can't stop eating it. I disagree. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad we could have a, a, a plural view on something so uh, divisive. We often have oh, of course. plural views on this show. <laughs> Plural views, yeah. Yeah, we do have plural views. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, taste. Basically, you think something and it's wrong, and, <laughs> then I, and then I. Very good, Mike. You. Um, Most views, in fact, expressed God. on this show are plural. Yes. So, taste. There are certain other tastes that aren't so delectable to the to the tongue that we consume, and they're delectable to the mind, though. I'm thinking of. Uh, Go on. I'm thinking of sexual congress here. Anything to say, Mike? Mate, I'm not the one with issues. You know what I mean? I no, but I think you've got something to say. <laughs> Do you know? I uh, I I read somewhere, probably probably uh, on the, uh, the here we here we go the I, online Daily Mail. I read somewhere that means on the online Daily oh, Mail oh, okay, that cool. apparently um, oral sex could be a cause of cancer, <laughs> mouth cancer. <laughs> Mike's face just fell through the floor. What? Well, I don't think you should be telling people that. It didn't say specifically cunnilingus either, so I assume it applies to both genders. Uh, Women uh, ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, it is it, still. Bear in mind, this was. Pro- was I think it was, was linked to the Daily Mail. Oh, uh, it's Thus, we, sh- we should ignore it. Yeah, because it is safe and absolutely the right thing for you to do. Mike, enough for your fellatio promotion. F- I mean, food's one of those great pleasures, isn't it? Like music, it's one of the things that. D- would you say it's one of the things that makes life worth living? Yeah, I guess. I mean, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's imagine you were deprived of taste. Someone cuts your tongue out, or as I've seen in a movie, uh, puts an iron out on your tongue. 
if you lost your taste, it'd be quite crap. It would, wouldn't it? But not the end of the world. Not the end of the world? Not in this day and age. No? Like you say, we're constantly told that what's in food and things like that. Don't particularly need... I don't particularly need taste. That's complete shit, Michael. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's uh, I don't know. Maybe it's slightly. If you look at the the points we raised, uh, for example, the being able to taste if something's poisonous, blah blah blah. I maybe it's slightly less mm. uh, important in that respect in this day and age. However, there are more pleasurable tastes available to us through technological advances and so on and so forth. Basically, just S- adding salt and sugar to everything. Yeah. That's what it comes down to in the end, is the classic seasonings, really. I mean, it, obviously it's yeah. mad, mad kind of combinations, but generally just lots of salt and sugar. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, sweet and sour never fails. Not sweet and sour. Sweet and salty never fails. Although sweet and sour. Sweet and sour, that's something I could go for. Yeah, but sweet and sour pork. Oh, God. Anything you... else to say about taste? I don't think so. Moment of truth, then. Where does taste rank? Five. <clears throat> you think... Ta- right, okay, so you're putting taste right at the bottom. Taste is five. Taste is the least important sense. <laughs> well, that obviously by process of elimination leaves uh, our remaining sense as number one so uh, we'll discuss that in a minute right after the next track goes out to Mike this is prison sex the following section has been removed due to copyright infringement sorry about that fight the power we're down to process of elimination obviously this this is your number one choice and I would argue that most people's number one choice of the sense that they value most highly and the sense they would least like to be deprived of. Mike, why don't you discuss what you've chosen as your most valued sense? The sense of sight. Sight. Uh, I don't think I really need to explain to uh, you, our loyal listeners, (laughs) the benefits you gain from sight. (laughs) I think they're fairly apparent to all of you lucky enough to be blessed with the gift of sight you only have to Uh, look at the pornography industry probably to figure that out yeah or me (laughs) yes Mike defensively how does sight help crucial see danger coming Uh, isn't isn't that you know but no no no, hold on though there's no clearer way to establish a threat a threat than by seeing it with your own eyes <laughs> true but I'd also argue that it's, it's up to it's up to the human mind how it reacts to these things there, there's a for instance there's a big difference between leaving a camera in a room and leaving it running than having a camera on your shoulder and following every movement around the room it's the same with the eyes you're walking down the street if you're just vacantly letting stuff pass you by, that's no use at all. It's how you use your eyes. It's the muscles in your eyes, and it's your reaction to what you're seeing. For instance, you know, a guy's making for your wallet, right? Walking down a busy street. Now, you're a bit dozy, completely asleep, Excuse not paying, me? paying attention. Sorry, I was describing <laughs> you. You're, uh, you're, you're walking down the street, you're completely blanking everyone, nobody's face is even registering really it's just a it's just a white noise of pedestrians the guy approaches you don't see him coming smashes into you might apologize walks by 10 minutes later you go to pull your wallet out pay for your food oh crap where's my wallet gone so you know your sight hasn't helped you at all it's only how you react and use your sight for instance you're on your game you're alert you're walking down the street you uh, you're glancing askance now and again. You're using your uh, you're using peripherals. Your peripherals, exactly. You you see, you know, you notice odd movement. You notice a guy who keeps glancing at you. You don't recognise him. You get a bit suspicious. You bust out Desmond Troy. You kick oh. his ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, story finished. Yeah. Defensively, I mean, it's it's jaw dropping the obvious, isn't it? Crucial. 
But again, I'll give you another example of how uh, defensively it only works with how you use your sight. Don't look into the sun. There's well, no, there's nothing. The fact it, that it hurts your eyes. Yeah, but, but I, then that's I, feel. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think, the, I don't think there's nothing in your sight eyes. Yeah, go on. Is the most important. No. Wait. Sight relies on all sight. of the other senses, really. S yes. See, it's not it's not as amazing as we first thought. Well, does uh, sight, I sight, say sight relies on touch? No, no. I, touch, I, sorry, they not they all rely on each other. They do to a certain extent. I mean, sight, 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 sight relies. No, you sight, can see what what is the are you? Yes, are you aware of the what you can see the percentage of. What I'm saying is like sight relies on what your brain, you know, what the computer in your head. Evaluates what it picks up on. Yeah, what, how it uses the information. Your eyes alone, your gift of sight alone, is not a huge gift. Yeah, but then again, it's how you use it. So, it's taste. Taste is only how your brain touch. No, 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 no. Because whatever you put into your mouth, you will taste it. Whatever you, whatever passes by your line of vision, you won't necessarily pick, See? Up, pick up what it is. You see it. Not, not, you, always. You not always. No, you switch your mind off. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> no, Mike, you're not getting my. You're not no, getting what I'm saying. I do. I do understand what you're saying, but you're wrong. It, you're wrong. You shut your eyes. You don't see it. Yeah. You no, 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 it. Mike. You can see it without walking, making walking a conscience. Conscious, yeah, yeah. It, conscious. If you're not conscious of what you're seeing, it's just passing you by. The fact that it passes into your line of vision does not mean that you've seen it. I could. You could be asleep and I might put something in your mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the most ridiculous, <laughs> you might not ridiculous moral dilemma, whatever you want to call it, scenario no, to try I'm and saying demonstrate is point. All of your senses rely on how your no, brain interprets them. Of course they do. No, 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 yeah, but what I'm saying is... They don't mean anything without yeah, your brain. Yeah, of course, obviously, but what I mean is your brain unconsciously is triggered by the other senses if you put if I poured custard in your mouth you wouldn't even if you thought oh god I hate custard I really don't want to taste custard as soon as it hits your tongue your brain's told you oh that's custard I know the taste of custard yeah right but unless if you're say okay, unless someone's just put an iron ugh, on my uh, no 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 tongue. stop stop trying to muddy the waters you're walking down the street, your eyes are open, you're sleepwalking. Stuff's going into your line of vision, you're not taking it in. You're not seeing it. You wake up the next morning, where the hell have I just gone? I don't remember doing any of that. Okay, you're drunk, you put your hand in some water, it takes you a few seconds to realise it's hot. You're, or, no, you're, no, or you're that's, that that's blotted, complete, that's everything tastes different. the same. That's completely different. That's, that's not. That's, that's how that's, your brain is. No, the that's, a drug, your brain. that's a drug affecting it. That's a drug affecting, affecting the messages it. sent to. What? You can't. S no, Mike, you're completely so what, missing the point. So, okay, so there's nothing affecting you if you're walking down the street taking in nothing. Why would you walk down the street and take in nothing? <laughs> I didn't say you were taking nothing. Obviously, you were taking in some things. People, cars, objects, signs. It's around like, your peripherals and other areas. If you're, you're not, not taking things in properly, in. then your vision is impaired, isn't it? By something. No, no, no. Of course it is. What was the last book you read? <laughs> Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> <sighs> you just made a mug of yourself, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, the last book you read, can you remember every word? No. Can you remember every picture in the book? No. There you go. Did you take it in properly? Probably not. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, what I'm Touché. trying, to, yeah, <laughs> touche. <coughs> what I'm trying to say is, all of the other senses are automatically triggered by anything they come into contact with. Wrong. No, no, no. I do. Uh, no, in fact, I'm going to mug myself off. You're wrong. Hearing, you can zone out hearing as well. Thank you. You're wrong. I was right. You can zone out hearing. The other senses, you can't. If if you if you, you can sniff in, them, you can you can no 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 we, we're just can. talking about in a natural state oh, in natu a natural state okay, natural state you've got a cold 
You can't smell. Touché, okay. <laughs> that's the, that sense as well. Okay, not many of them. Touch, you can't avoid touch. Natural taste. Your natural taste? Ta- okay, no, na- taste no, no taste. All right, okay. No taste. You- taste? All right, okay, okay, okay. Touch. You're, T- touch you're, and taste. You're so cold, your hands are numb. Oh, you're going to be wrong with this argument. Yes! Very good. Okay. That's natural. Yes. Taste. You've put something dodgy in your mouth or spiky in your mouth. Spicy. Say spicy. Most spiky. <laughs> and it's punctured a what, hole through what? your tongue. A cactus? Punctured a hole through your tongue and it's swollen up. No, that's a bad example, Mike. What you, what you could have said is, you know, you drank some boiling tea by mistake or something. Okay, oh, yeah, you, you drunk something because your, uh, your touch was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this was, is It was on the blink. You, uh... That's really stupid. You put, uh, a load of boiling water into your mouth accidentally. Yeah. And temporarily damaged your taste buds. You're unable to taste. Now... What you're saying... What I'm trying to say now is... I've y- won. You, no, you haven't won. You haven't won. You're you, wrong. You thought you won, No, but you're wrong. No, You said yourself I'm winning you round. No, I'm you, right. You won me round from my original position, but you haven't won the argument because... Because no one can ever win a bloody argument against you because you'll never concede.